Hello and welcome to the actual final video of the IS300 manual swap. This is just going to be a video of finishing touches, going to install the tunnel cover, the centre console stuff, the manual gator section, the rubbers and the shift knob. So before I do anything else, I'm just going to get a file and start filing back the tunnel here that I cut. I cut the, the front section, if you remember, and then I had to cut the rear section because it just wasn't going in. Because I was trying to get the gearbox in on axle stands, I didn't quite have the angle to be able to get it in without cutting both the front section and the rear section of the tunnel. Right, so I've filed that all down and primed it just like the front. Yeah, no, it doesn't look great but at least it's protected and you're not going to see it anyway because I'm going to cover it up now with this plate from Source Performance it is basically just a tunnel cover from when you uh, cut the tunnel and it screws into the existing holes at the front and at the back it goes on this way with the slots facing forward and uh, just goes like this that's it but what I'm going to do is put some rubber underneath. I've got this stuff called Pirelli webbing. It's basically just natural rubber uh, used for repairing furniture and stuff like that. So I'm going to put it down underneath here in strips. A strip there, a strip going along there, a strip going along there, and then on the other side as well. Just to make sure that the vibrations are... Well, or, well the sound deadening vibrations is, is kept to the absolute minimum. Because it is a Lexus and it's supposed to be quiet. All right then, so I've cut out the strips that I need and now I'm just gonna bolt the plate on. That's all bolted in now. Looks pretty cool actually. I'm tempted to leave it like this, but yeah, the rest of it looks terrible. Now we're gonna put the rubber boots on. Uh, the arrow there tells you point it that way. And then also, look, there's an arrow on this one as well. Is it? Yeah, right there. So this one goes on. Oh dear. That wasn't good. That's because the car locked by itself. Anyway, so we're going to put this one in first. And if you see on the bottom, it actually sort of shrouds around the bottom of the gear stick. So let's do that. <sighs> so originally these, oh, so originally these four bolts actually went in these holes, but they go too far down now on the front and they end up hitting this bracket. So I'm going to use these to actually put the rubber parts on. Hopefully it'll fit. It's, it's the same thread, so let's just give it a shot. This one goes on here then. I'm not sure just how far it goes over. I think it just goes over the bottom of here like this. But it might go a little bit further. No, I think that is it. There seems to be a big gap there though. Hmm. I have no idea. Let's just, uh, let's just try and put this one on top and then screw it in, see what happens. Alright, that seems fine. I'm just gonna leave it that way. We should probably take this off. Oh, oh dear me. Alright, now it's time to get the set in the console in. Obviously we don't need any of these cables now, but I'm just gonna tuck them in here. A tiny carpet. quite sure which ones to plug in here. I 
think it's these two. What's that one? That's a weird shape. I don't know what the, oh, that one's for the cigarette lighter. That one is for... That one goes in here for the little light in the ashtray. And this grey one I think goes in here for... Well, yeah, the ashtray as well. Let's go with that. This one in here. This one in here, I think. Hmm, it's not the same colour though, so maybe not. There's nothing else that will fit in there though, so it's going in. And then this one here. We don't need the rest. And the last little bit. It's been two weeks now and something's still not right with changing gear. The biting point is really high and it feels like the clutch is slipping a little bit as well. It's just a strange scenario, but I think I've got the solution, which is what Martin and Mark suggested, suggested um, is to change the clutch master cylinder. The one I used originally was actually the same number, except 53020. This is 010. I'm using an IS200 clutch pedal, which means I should use an IS200 clutch master cylinder, and that is this one. Even though on Amayama it says that IS200 and IS300 ones, uh, a tribute to the part number that I bought and not this one. <sighs> anyway, I've uh, I've just got this one from JDM Garage and uh, we're all good to go now. I'm also going to change the clutch hose because this one's going to root in the engine bay a lot better. Um, it goes into the OEM clips where the other pipes are and they're two uh, straight angled, I mean uh, <laughs> straight connections as well instead of angled ones which are used on the Hell Performance one doesn't quite fit unless you've got a Supra basically so this one roots really well at the moment all I've got is the the Hell Performance one just draped over the gearbox which is just going to heat it up it's uh, not the most ideal situation we're going to change that today though so let's go as you can see I've drawn this little diagram it's not the best but um, there's the clutch fork uh, slave master and pedal clutch pedal this is a different length and the cylinder is a different size and a different length. The travel is all different. The pressure will be different going to the slave, uh, which alters the way the clutch works inside the car. But, well, alters the way the fork uh, makes contact with everything. So this is the issue that I'm having. And we're going to try and solve that by installing what I think is a smaller cylinder with more travel. But don't quote me on that, I'm not quite sure. This time I'm taking the lower part of the dash off because it makes everything way easier. You've got two uh, two clips you've got to take out here, which is for uh, the headlight washers and the rear fog lights. Then you've got the OBD2 port, which is just in here. There's two little clips either side on this side. There's two clips either side there. You just squeeze them and it pops out this way. Then you've got the auto leveling headlight thingy. And then another one. And then another one here. I don't even know what it's for. It's some venting thing. Strange. Then you've got the bonnet latch, which we'll do right now. There we go. And then we can move this now. It makes everything so much easier because then you've got all this top space and you can actually see uh, what you're doing with the clutch pedal. So remember that, um, that annoying bolt that is right up on the opposite side of this one? Yeah, I'm gonna have to take that out now. Woo! But the first thing we're gonna do, of course, is take out the pin right here. Let's get the clip first. Yeah. And we can push the pin out the other side. You see it there on the other side? That's what we wanna take out. Oh, there we go. And that frees up the clutch master cylinder then, or the linkage for it. I literally don't even think I can get into the, the space where that bolt is. All I can say, is it's on the opposite side of this diagonally. And it's on the... Can I get it from here? Here it is. That's the dreaded bolt. 
So we're going to try and get that one out now. Oh, sorry, the dreaded nut. And as I explained before, the best way to get to that bolt is with a swivel adapter. All right, got those two nuts off. <sighs> Wasn't very fun. I'm going to disconnect the clutch hose from the slave cylinder now and let the oil drain into this bucket. Let's take the ground off because I don't want it getting covered in oil. I'm just waiting for this to drain now. It's almost, well, pretty much done. Now that they're both side to side, I really can't see that much of a difference other than the angle of this um, little nozzle section here and the size of the tube. The length of the tube is much longer and a little bit thinner, I think, as well. I, I could argue that this is a little bit longer, maybe. Let me see. Let's line them up. Eh, I mean, maybe, but not a whole lot. Maybe it's different internally. I hope so, and I hope that's the problem, because if it's not this, then I have no idea what it is. That went in quite easy, so now I'm going to put the nuts on the other side. Oh, as you can see, this looks exactly the same as the other one. Well, a different colour. All right, the nuts are on and the pin is in and the clip. Now, I'm going to install the clutch hose. We've got double angled here. Angled and angled. Not ideal for our situation. This one is straight and straight and roots a lot better. The non-swivelly side goes into the clutch master cylinder. Would have been a lot easier doing this when the clutch master cylinder was out of the car. I'm going to put this over the top and all the way down. There's no way. There's no way. Alright, I'm just rooting it for now. Uh, and then I'll sort the uh, the mountain out later. Just can't seem to get it in those clips. It's so tight. I think the one down there, the clip down here, is bigger. You can't even see it on the camera. Let's reconnect the ground. Now we're going to bleed the clutch using Mark and Martin's little open, down, closed up method. Open. Down. That's it. Closed. Up. Open. Down. Closed. Up. Open. Down. Closed. Up. Open. Down. Closed. Up. Open. Down. Closed. Oh, it's not some air bubbles. Check again. Might not be low enough yet because of the... Alright, we just finished bleeding the clutch and uh, it feels a bit soft, but I started it up and it sounds so much better, like getting trying to get the biting first. So I'm just going to pack everything up and then I'll take it for a test drive. The car did run a lot better with the new clutch master cylinder, so I guess it did make a difference. Um, it still wasn't perfect and still needed adjusting a little bit. And the clutch was starting to slip as well, so I probably didn't run it in right. Uh, probably a bit too hasty. So the new owner replaced the clutch and says it runs absolutely fine now. There was no test drive because the car has been sold. 
Now, I'll talk about that in just a little bit, but first I'm gonna give you a quick breakdown of the finances and how much it cost to do the whole manual swap. Without a doubt, the most expensive parts were the gearbox, the bell housing adapter, the clutch and flywheel kit, and the reprogramming of the ECU. The gearbox was 450, the bell housing adapter was 450, the clutch and flywheel kit was 550, and the reprogramming of the ECU was 350, but I also had to buy the ECU for 60, so that's a total of 410. Now the drive shaft, uh, the interior parts, the pedals, the shift knob, all that stuff, it's not really that expensive, but there's so many small parts like that that it does add up. It was a really, really challenging project. Um, there's so many things that I would have done different, but the main things are, number one, I wouldn't have done the manual swap on axle stands in the driveway. It breaks your body working like this. Um, if I was to do it again, I'd definitely do it on a ramp. Um, no, well, not a ramp, no, a lift for sure. Number two, I would have probably not gone with the J160 gearbox. I just went with it because I wanted to get the manual swap done and it was cheap, but not the best idea. If I was to do it again, I probably would have went for the BMW gearbox the from the diesel cars, what's it called? The GS6-53DZ. I would have went with that one. Uh, that's becoming a more popular swap for these cars now, um, at least in the UK. And if I really wanted to go with a good gearbox, I would go for either the R154 or the CD009A, but they are super expensive and they increase the cost by a good, probably two to 3,000. The third thing is I would have absolutely got a daily driver because I've been building this car as my project car, but also as my daily driver. And it, I'm always rushing, trying to get things done so that I can go back to work because I've been taking holiday every time I want to make a video and modify the car. Not ideal. I would definitely get a daily driver next time and that's what I plan to do from now on in the future. That is the end of the manual swap project. Uh, I set out to make the most detailed manual swap IS300 video that I possibly could so I hope that I somewhat achieve that. I would like to thank a few people. There was no way I would have been able to do this without any of these people. Uh, Mark and Martin at Source Performance. Uh, Rob Harrington, who's got a six, 600 and something horsepower IS300, go check him out on Instagram. Chris at Phoenix Management, who reprogrammed the ECU, absolutely flawless. There's VT Bobby, who has got a good YouTube channel on IS300 manual swaps. Uh, so go check out his channel if you need some extra information, especially if you're in the US. Chris Fix had some really useful videos for clutches, so um, everyone knows who Chris Fix is. Go check out his videos on the clutch, um, the clutch and flywheel stuff if you're having some trouble. Uh, my good friend Fred was always there on hand to um, for moral support because it was a bit of a nightmare sometimes, and he definitely helped me out. Uh, George Hampel also I had him on the phone. Um, trying to figure stuff out and, and texting him all the time and he, he helped me a lot. Originally I was actually supposed to go and do a collab with him but some some things, it just wasn't the right time and we didn't do it in the end but I really want to thank him because he was definitely there for me um, during some difficult times. Last of all, I want to thank everyone who watched the whole series and everyone who subscribed to the channel and who's watched my videos. Really means a lot and we just hit 5,000 subscribers, not too long ago so um yeah thank you so much never in a million years would i thought five thousand people would subscribe to my channel and start watching me just play about with my car i know i'm not as big as some other channels but i really do try my best and i'm super grateful really really from the bottom of my heart really thankful for you guys watching lost quite a lot of money doing this is 300 stuff um but <laughs> that's what it takes to build uh, to build the youtube channel i suppose it's been a year and five months since I actually did this swap. The content has come out really slowly. I understand that. And it's um, it's not what I intended to do at first, but I've just been in the background planning for stuff, planning massive things for this channel. Still gonna be JDM stuff. Gonna be good. Just wait it out. <laughs>
ways it out. I promise it's going to be worth it. So the car, yeah, I have sold the car now. Um, personal circumstances. Um, I'm really disappointed that I didn't get to finish the project. I know I was going to do the turbo conversion and I was going to do all forged internals and everything, but it just it just wasn't meant to be, unfortunately. Um, it is sad. Um, I did sell the car to someone who I know is going to look after it. Anyway, that's the end of the video. And uh, just leave your comments, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll be willing to help anyone who's going through the same process. So just let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe if you want to come along for the ride. Peace.